Okay, everybody, we're going to try unit four, lesson one, uh, question number four from the homework. We're going to graph this function right here by determining its maximum or minimum. So here are what the steps are. Step letter A, you want to take the derivative of that function. So y prime equals 4x cubed minus 3x squared. The second step, you want to take the derivative and you want to find out where it equals zero where it will have a horizontal tangent line at the top of a maximum or maybe at the bottom of a minimum. So the derivative 4x cubed minus 3x squared equals zero. You can common factor out an x squared and you're left with 4x minus three. Two factors multiplied together to give you zero. So either x squared equals zero, x is equal to plus or minus the square root of zero. So x of course just equals zero. That's one critical number, one potential maximum or minimum. Or you have 4x minus 3 equals 0. 4x equals 3. x equals 3 quarters. So there are your two critical numbers. Step letter C then is to make the um, first derivative chart to determine which, one's, which point is a maximum or a minimum or neither. So let's make a number line by placing our two values, 0 and 3 quarters creating three intervals, numbers less than zero, numbers between zero and three quarters, numbers greater than three quarters. So x less than zero is one interval, x in between zero and three quarters is a second interval, x greater than three quarters is a third interval. So we're making our first derivative chart and we're gonna consider the factors of the first derivative. x squared is one factor, 4x minus 3 is a second factor. What does that mean for the first derivative? And what does that suggest for the function? So let's take a number less than 0, like negative 1. When you square it, you get a positive value. When you put it into this factor, 4 times negative 1 subtract 3 gives you a negative value. These two factors multiplied together make the whole derivative negative. And if the ne derivative is negative, it suggests that the slope of the tangent line is negative the function is decreasing, going down to the right. Let's take a number in between zero and three quarters, like 0 0.5 or 1 half, whatever, however you want to think about it. When you square it, you get a positive. Uh, four times 0 0.5 subtract three is still a negative. A positive times a negative is still a negative. The function is still decreasing. But when you pick a number bigger than three quarters, like one or two or three, when you square it, you get a positive. 4 times 1 squared subtract 3 is a positive. Now you have two positive factors. When you multiply those together, you get a positive for a result. That suggests that the slope is now going up to the right. It's an increasing function. So we have a function that was decreasing to the left of 0. It continued to decrease once it passed 0. But as it passed 3 quarters, it changes to an increasing function. So if you go from decreasing to increasing, you're creating a minimum. So we say this is a minimum value right here, and 3 quarters is the x value. You need to put 3 quarters into the original function to find out the value of y. So y will equal 3 quarters to the fourth minus 3 quarters cubed and that gives you a value of negative 27 over 256, which is equal to negative 0.105 approximately. So negative 27 over 256, 0.75 comma negative 0.105. So we only have one value from this chart one minimum value produced, so we'll take a look over here at plotting it. On our x and y axis, we imagine this point right here, minus 3 quarters, comma, negative 27 over 256. That's a minimum value. The function's gone from decreasing on the left side to increasing on the right. Something was happening at zero as well, but our first derivative test doesn't tell us that. So I'm going to draw the sketch without giving you a lot of detail, but to certainly make sure you understand that at this point we determined it was a minimum value. The slope was negative to the left and then positive to the right. And at three quarters, the slope of the tangent line, 
as we determined from our first um, setting the derivative equal to zero over here in our step B, we found out that the slope was going to be zero at these two points. Now, what's happening here? What's happening here? That's a lesson for later.